to chapter 8 of tutorial 7 for heritage offices. In this tutorial, of this chapter, we are looking at sites and the various um, things you can do with sites, like the grading process and the declaration process and the site recording process. And this will probably take a few chapters to, to cover. There are two types of sites on SARS in terms of security. There are sites in organic groups and those outside the organic group system. The organic groups module um, was covered, up, covered in an earlier chapter or tutorial and it protects archaeological and paleontological sites, uh, shipwrecks, coordinate data is hidden within the organic groups and only members of the organic groups are able to see the content generated by the, their own groups. Uh, for declared sites, we generally don't have the permission issues and most of the declared sites don't reside within any organic groups and buildings are a good example of kinds of sites that generally don't need to fall within an organic group. So it's essential that all sites are logged onto SARS, um, whether they are grade threes, the local significance, or higher up uh, along the chain of grade two, provincial and national for grade one. Um, in order to um, integrate the permitting process um, through local municipal level right up to national level. So the sites, you can either create them or explore them and Again, there are menus for these, so under Explore, you have Sites, and then various menus related to Sites, and under Create, you have Sites and Site Recordings and Field Surveys. The Site Recording process is becoming mandatory for all impact assessments very soon, so let's go through the creation of a site and the a typical survey um, example for that. So let's create a site, and this will be a building somewhere in Cape Town um, that's not on SARS and we'll pretend it's a grade 3 um, resource, ungraded, we're not sure if it's 3A, B or C and it's simply older than 60 years and um, it needs a permit application so let's go through creating that site so let's just call it test 2 you'll notice the related content widget kicks in and warns us whether the there are other site references with the same name. Um, so test 2 seems to work fine. Okay, and then we'll pick out the full set site name. Um, okay, now typically you would use the street address. Um, let's use Sara. Um, there it is. And uh, let's do test Sara. Site category, let's pick building. Um, if it was archaeological, older than 100 years in a ruined state, then you would have picked um, ruin greater than 100 years. The location name is um, there we go, and Cape Town. Um, we can search for that in the map. Um, let's do that and this will map the site. Just check whether that's done correctly. Yes, that looks good. So let's place that in the middle of the building. Um, and let's move on to the property. And hopefully we have the property. Yes, there we go. So it's already listed in the properties database. Um, this in turn is linked to an owner um, and uh, the full details for the earth are, are logged there as well. We'll return to this in a second under the edit view of that property. The property is the site and we can upload various citations, journal articles and books around the site if we wanted to and um, if we were demolishing the site, um, we can flag the status. So if it has been demolished, we would simply flag this and then we know we have the information in the system, but the status of the site is now in, in demolished state. Um, if the a permit was refused for the site, um, then you could pick the grading flag and 
use that to filter out all the cases that need to go to the uh, next council uh, meeting, whether the site should be permanently placed in the heritage register or not. Um, there's various things you can use here. Okay, and then your organic groups, we wouldn't apply this to a building, um, so let's click save. I'm going to move very quickly through this. Um, a new recording will add a full recording of the of the site. So this is where you would see all the other fields you would expect for a building um, or any other site for that matter. So the date, January would be today. Um, let's just pick the hour. Um, project title might not apply. The primary recording flag is used if there are multiple recordings for the site. You pick the one which has the most information as the base record. The field survey, you can link this to a field survey if it was a series of 40 archaeological sites, for instance, done through an impact assessment. Then you can link that um, in this field, create your field su survey first. Under case reference, you link it to the case if it's an um, impact assessment. And then under alternate code name and common name, you can fill in other names for the site. Um, and then the recorder, let's just use the demo. Um, directions to site, site comments, admin comments, these are fairly self-explanatory. What you use to f uh, record the site. And then under structures, in this case, we can use the construction date. I don't know when it was built, but let's pretend. First of October 1915, the architect, um, you can pick the architect um, and so on and so forth, and the builder, and the architectural style, building type, current use, and so on. Um, then site conditions, and then uh, images and attachments, upload some images, and attachments might be your recording form that you might have used. Um, the other fields don't apply to this t kind of site, uh, the other tabs rather, and then save. So now we have a basic recording, we have a site. Um, we can go back to our site, and we can now grade our site. So let's click on gradings, and we are going to grade it by Sara. So let's do us and it's used today it's not an object it's grading we'll say grade one this is a test grading and over here we would have the brief statement of significance the full statement of significance and then the various um, tags that you're, you're used to with the nomination form are listed here and you only need to f flag the ones that are applicable to the site. You don't need to fill all of them in. So let's use the various fields, add another item. You can view what the old nomination form looks like by right-clicking and going to that page. And then the Heritage Western Cape Guide to Grading is also very useful, especially for buildings. They have an excellent gra grading guide and this explains uh, the flow um, for, for sites what grade 3 A, B's and C's mean. Um, he has the old nomination form and you'll see all these fields are listed in this series of um, tags over here. Let's pick up um, perhaps the... I'm just making this up really. Let's say sense of place and provincial and high and perhaps um, something at national level. Right, and that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so you get the idea. So you have your spheres, the geographical sphere, and the level. Um, and then in combination uh, with your um, statement of significance and the recording, an argument can be made for the site to be declared uh, in terms of section 27 or 29 um, as a national or provin provincial heritage site. So the whole nomination process starts with the grading fields filled in. Um, a case should be created for the um, for the site um, to be declared as well. So that's an important step because that's where all your decisions and correspondence will be logged. Um, the site um, 
does not have a case yet. So if we go off to create a case for the nomination process, let's do that. So let's say Sara, it's a nomination case, and we'll pick, um, and it's not a development, and let's say um, this is nomination of test two, I think it was, um, as a national heritage site, and proposed nomination. Okay, and then down on the admin section, or inventory links rather, you can pick the site. Let's do that, and test. And, I th oh yes, test Sara, that's what we made it. So let's just change that. And we've got our site link to the case. Uh, we need an applicant. Okay, and that's the basic information. You don't need to map um, a nomination of a site because you already um, have the mapping under the uh, inventory link. And then other documentation which may be relevant, you can attach to um, the attached docs. Um, you would need a case officer and presumably not just receive status. Anyone can nominate a site, of course, so they would need to fill in the, the grading area of the site, the site, and the, the case in order to nominate a site for um, provincial or national heritage site status. So that's fairly easy, so let's save that. So we have a case, we have a site, we have a grading completed. Let's go back to our site. It's under the admin section there. Um, so we have a grading here. Um, and then the final step when you actually declare the site would be a declaration. Um, it's not an object in this case. Um, the organization is Sara. So it's the. Uh, the Gazette number, the date of the Gazette, the notice number, usually the same, and then the type, this National Heritage Site. There are various other ones there as well, um, so you can pick those depending on the situation. Um, and then the short description, full description usually comes straight across from the grading. You can copy and paste, but you might change the formatting slightly. This is what you would put in the is what you would have put in the Gazette, um, Provincial or the Gazette. Provincial, uh, provi provincial Gazette applies to Provincial Heritage Sites, the Gazette to, to National Heritage Sites. And then um, these three fields that you wouldn't see normally, the old, old unused fields, and then the PDF of the, um, the Gazette is uploaded here. So um, you can click on Upload as, as you usually would and upload the PDF. And that would be a complete gazette. Um, and if you would like to upload images around the declaration, you're also free to do so over here. Okay, let's save that. And that is a complete um, nomination declaration process around a site. Um, objects, very similar. You just pick objects, the relevant objects that you're declaring in terms of section 32. Um, instead of the site. So they can be similarly um, declared, um, recorded, and have cases linked to them, um, except they don't have a three-tiered system for objects. So they are either undeclared or they are grade one national heritage objects. Um, that is it. Uh, let's stop the tutorial there for the next section, which will be looking at managing organic groups.